What's up guys, welcome back to some more Atlas news, we've got tameable dolphins, a new farmhouse or two, and uh, a few little tweaks and stuff, plus some coffee which is always good. As you can see, that was the release video for the tameable dolphins, what I didn't tell you was, if you went and done what's happening there, jump out of the water, you might die. <laughs> Let's get into it. So as always, we will have news from the dev team and then the patch notes afterwards. If you just want to watch the patch notes, check out the description for timestamps. Patch V520.12, Table Dolphins, Coffee and Balance Changes. Ahoy Pathfinders, we hope you all have had a wonderful start to the new year so far. Atlas's first patch of the year is now here and we thank you for your patience. Since we've renewed the Atlas journey last summer, there have been many changes and we are continuing to further develop features and mechanics that are starting to take shape. Farmhouses, warehouses, markets and the trading system will continue to be tweaked and refined. We have plenty in store for the specialised ships within the ships for gold system as players will be able to customise these ships as more are released and the system becomes more sophisticated. We are still testing a new claim system and trade wins are still on our agenda. We also have a few new things on the horizon for Atlas, not to mention we are continuing to work on optimization and server improvements in the background. <laughs> we hope you stick with us, it's going to be an exciting ride. New this patch, Table Dolphins. Tired of travelling by ship, dolphin riding is now an alternate form of water traversal. Dolphins are the first underwater creatures that can be tamed and bred by unlocking the new underwater taming skill in the Beast Mastery Tree. They can be tamed passively by feeding them the meat, in particular the new squid tentacle which can be obtained by defeating squids. As part of an overall initiative to revamp and bring new purpose to the tames, dolphins are the first of a slate of new underwater tames that will have specialised functions. After all, as a pirate game we would expect there to be more interactions with creatures at sea. Pathfinders can expect small changes to tames and breeding to slowly roll out in tow with some patches. We hope to elevate the taming system in Atlas to be more viable and fun as other mechanics may change how tames we used before. And there you can see the new coffee vendor or seed vendor um, sitting on his barrel, <laughs> looking happy with himself. Seed vendor and coffee. Business is booming and the new vendor set up shop at the Freeport. Working on your farm and looking for a particular crop, the seed vendor is your one-stop shop. Most seeds can be purchased at a rate of 10 gold for 5 seeds. With new business also comes a new crop. Coffee seeds can now be purchased from the sea vendor at 20 gold for 5 seeds. I think that's meant to be seed vendor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Fight away sleep in real life and in game. Coffee beans can be brewed to create coffee. Drinking coffee will give pirates the new buff, caffeinated, which reduces income and poor damage. Embrace the power of coffee. Do we smell a starfish bucks empire coming up? <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, all right. <laughs> the, um, I'm not going to say too much on these patch notes and say it for another time, but that sounds to me with a caffeinated buff that the Tapor arrows, the Trank arrows are, if they don't already, which the original patch said they wouldn't. Um, the sound like eventually they probably will do to portal players and if you've got the caffeinated buff it will stop you falling asleep. I can't think why else they would introduce that. Farmhouse variants. Last patch we introduced the Lumberyard, the first of the new farmhouse variants as we continue to refine the farmhouse system. These variants are specialised farmhouses that will gather certain resources at a faster rate. We are now introducing the mine, a farm that will gather metals and gems and the quarry, a farm that will gather stone, crystal, salt and flint. They both share the same placement restrictions as other farmhouses but require different resources to craft as detailed in the patch notes. All farmhouses are undergoing changes in preparation for adding blueprints. Gather rates have temporarily been normalised at a lower rate across all types. Quality blueprints with stats will increase this in the future patch. Other changes made to farmhouses include base inventory size and base inventory slot increases. 
Based on feedback, decay time of farmhouses has been changed to 10 days. Um, so yeah, that change is pretty good, I guess. It's going to mean if people are not playing anymore and they spam farmhouses everywhere, they should deteriorate quicker. Balancing and tweaks. Through our observations, conversations and feedback from players, patch 520.12 also includes some balance changes and tweaks that should help to mitigate some of the issues we're seeing. Bowlers are a versatile tool that can be used on creatures and players. While great to use for taming and fun to use on others, there was little that could be done to counter the mechanic when a player is caught. We've reduced the duration of bowler entrapment from 5.5 to 2.5 seconds and after recovering from entrapments, players cannot be entrapped by a bowler for 10 seconds. Another change we've made is that players can no longer stand while entrapped by a bowler. Explosive barrels, oh boy, there's more explosive barrel changes. Explosive barrels have been a hot topic and we are continuing to work out a good balance for them to fit within the mechanics of the game. Cannons, large cannons, swivel guns and blisters are now immune to AoE damage from explosive barrels. Damage from explosive barrels to players and creatures has also been reduced. We are also continuing to make changes to the ramming galley and both ship systems as we prepare to roll out the rest of the upcoming ships of gold. The ramming galley has received a few quality of life updates, an increase in number of additional structures that can be placed and an increase in turn speed with rowers active. An adjustment to the leak crate when damage has been made as well in general, we've also added the option to purchase ship levels 56 to 60 ship gold cost will also now scale with ship quality and we will continue to take a look at the prices and adjust accordingly to balance with future changes and mechanics to both ship systems released patch notes new structure mine the mine is a farm that only gathers metal and gems it can be crafted at the smithy after learning the advanced automation skill in the construction and merchantilism tree shares placement restrictions with other farmhouses Crafting resources, 800 wood, 600 thatch, 320 fiber, 280 metal, 100 hide. New structure, quarry. The quarry is a farm that only gathers stone, crystal and salt and flint. It can be crafted at the smithy after learning the advanced automation skill in the construction and merchantilism tree. Shares placement restrictions with a farmhouse. Crafting resources, 800 wood, 600 thatch, 320 fiber, 280 metal, 100 hide. New shop, seed vendor. A new vendor has arrived. The seed vendor can be found in free ports and provides all seeds required for your farming needs. Coffee seeds, 20 gold for 5 seeds. All other seeds, 10 gold for 5 seeds. New drink, coffee. Coffee can be brewed at either the cooking pot or grill after learning the intermediate recipe skill in the cooking and farming tree. After drinking, pirates are given a new buff, caffeinated, which reduces income into poor damage. Incoming to pour damage reduced by 15%, buff lasts for 10 minutes, ingredients 1 water, 30 coffee beans. New vegetable coffee bean, since coffee beans are not native to the atlas, they can only be grown from seeds. Pirates who prefer adventure and oversleep will always want to keep coffee beans on hand. New seed, coffee seed, coffee seeds can only be purchased from a seed vendor, they are required for growing coffee beans. Can be placed in tropical, temperate and equatorial environments. New tame, dolphin. Dolphins can be tamed passively by hand feeding them meat. In particular, they enjoy fresh squid tentacles, fish meat and crustacean meat. By grabbing hold of their dorsal fin, pathfinders can ride them as they speed and jump through the ocean. Favourite food, squid tentacles, taming style, passive, saddle, none. Primary attack by secondary ability, jump. Gives nearby pathfinders the dolphin intellect buff, increase intelligence stat for 10 minutes. New meat, squid tentacles. Squid tentacles are now a type of meat that can be obtained by defeating squids. They can be eaten raw and don't spoil. Instead, they dry out over time and remain safe to eat. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Dried squid tentacles will soon have a special use, so you may want to start collecting them now. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's actually added more reason to be out in a submarine, for example. So that's cool. I like that. And also I like the um, never rotting meat. That's pretty cool. I, I think that will be a nice addition. Bowler. Players can no longer stand while trapped by a bowler. 
Duration of player Bolo entrapment reduced from 5.5 to 2.5 seconds. After recovering from entrapment, players cannot be entrapped by a bowler for 10 seconds. Combat headshot multiplier reduced from 2 times to 1.5 times. Bug fix critical strike can no longer be used with weapons other than the sword. Explosive barrels, cannons, large cannons, shrivel guns, and ballistas are now immune to AoE damage from explosive barrels. Note these weapons can still be damaged by a direct hit from an explosive barrel fired from a catapult. Explosive barrel damage to players and creatures greatly reduced, deals 120 damage to pathfinders, 135 damage to creatures. Farmhouse variants. All farmhouse variants are undergoing iteration in preparation for add-in blueprints. Stats change and inventory is wiped at restart. You can cheat spawn high quality variants with better stats, bigger inventory and faster gathering. Base inventory size has been increased from 8k to 10k. Base inventory slots have been increased. DK time changed to 10 days. Gather rates have temporarily been normalised at a lower rate across all types. Quality blueprints with stats will increase this in the future patch. Ram and Galley. Increased number of additional structures that can be placed on the ship from 8 to 40. While turning, only one side of rowers will row, increasing the Ram and Galley's turn speed when rowers are active. The leak rate of damaged ship components now increases as the component's health decreases. Leaking begins at 25% health and the leak rate increases until the component reaches zero health. The maximum leak rate has not changed. Bug fix fixed an issue where the prompt for opening the command wheel would appear on parts of the ship after they had already been demolished. Ships added the option to purchase ship levels 56, 60 at a rate of 75 gold per 1000 XP. Levels can be purchased when viewing the ship stat menu. Note, ships can still reach max level by earning XP normally. Ship gold cost now scales with the ship quality. Minimum price is used for ships constructed at 100% durability shipyard and maximum price is used for ships constructed at 225% durability shipyard. Price ranges, oh boy, schooner 5,000 to 10,000 gold, brigantine 18,000 to 36,000 gold, galleon 50,000 to 100,000 gold. My god, that is nuts. I'm not going to go into it now, but all I will say is the reason why gold's so easy to get at the moment is because not a lot of people are playing. That's all I'm going to say to that. Thames. To poor damage from horses, rear kick attack reduced by 40%. Rabbits can now equip hats. Bears and rabbits now only receive 10% of the stat bonus from equipped hats. Miscellaneous increased grill ship structure weight from 1 kilo to 12 kilos. Wood doors, wood pillars, wood staircases, wood fence supports, and wooden ladders can now be crafted at the smithy. Winter event items are no longer crafted with the smithy or purchasable from the cosmetic vendor. Fix some cases where trade routes get reset or modified. Bug fix fence supports can no longer be placed without a connection to the ground. No, any floating fence supports placed prior to the patch will be destroyed. Some crashes fixed. Known issues. Levels 46 to 50 can be purchased on ships with a level cap of 50. Trade route range was increased between patches to include nearby servers. These farther routes are getting reset on server restarts and may be having other issues. Riding a dolphin at or near the surface will occasionally cause it to die. Tame dolphins may no longer be able to jump after crossing grids. Farm variants have floating fires near them. And there's a nice picture of some rabbits with hats on. <laughs> and the final note as always, it's early access, keep it in mind, things change, yada yada yada. So, interesting news, um, I've already seen a lot of people complaining that they've released the dolphin as the main part of this patch and it doesn't work properly, the dolphin's dying when it goes to the surface, etc. Um, it doesn't work properly once it's cross grids, that kind of thing, and they, you know, they probably should have polished it up before they released it. But, you know interesting we'll have to see how that goes as they chop and change things i'm not going to say too much i might do something in the future going over some points i don't know we'll see what happens but all i will say is i'm guessing where people have been saying how easy it is to get gold 
they have taken it upon themselves that that's fine so they've increased all the gold rates for the higher end ships the reason why it's easy to get gold at the moment guys on official is because nobody's playing that's the only reason it's so easy because you can go and raid a sea fort and get you know tens of thousands of gold because no one else is really doing it so when you do go back no one else has been there and it's just been sat there collecting gold because even if people are not playing that much and they're logging on and keeping things ticking over the markets are still working which means trade routes are still working trade routes are still passing through the sea forts nobody's raiding because nobody's playing and they're just mounting up loads and loads of gold so when they do get raided you're getting massive amounts of gold that's the only reason why gold's so easy to get right now i think this is a massive mistake i do think this is a massive mistake unless they're going to actually increase the amount of gold you get from say treasure from doing maps and things like that i, I just think it's too much and they still 100 percent need to reduce the cost of the schooner like forget the brigantine and the galleon they need to reduce the cost of the schooner the schooner is what is gonna get people to fall in love with this game i've said it so many times they need to reduce that that should be starting at a thousand gold and ending at 5k gold in my opinion for the schooner um some people don't want any gold cost for the ships i think it's nice to have the gold cost i've seen arguments that you know why are you paying gold something you've collected resources for yada 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 you know we can argue all day long about what it could be doing um, at the end of the day i think it gives value to the gold and makes you know it adds more to the game in a way I, I believe that anyway at least and i know other people feel the same but i just think these gold prices are too much um you know again like i've said before the brigantine and galleon not so bad but the schooner is just ridiculous this ship will get people to just fall in love with this game i can't emphasize it enough it's such a fun ship to have um it's the first ship that you can have that you can actually customize in different ways and you know you can really make it your own make it unique to other people's if that's what you like to do if you're into ship building um, for pvp it's a great ship for pve combat it's a great ship it allows you to do so much of the game as a solo player or as a small company they want to get you in this as soon as they can this should not be expensive but there you go guys we'll talk about some of this at another time maybe i'm trying to keep this video shorter because it's gone a little bit back to the old format of the news and patch notes together so there we go guys if the video was informative if you like these videos don't forget to give it a thumbs up it will help me out and you know show me it's worth doing these videos um i do enjoy doing them and putting the news out obviously and talking to you guys in the comments about the different opinions we all have on it so obviously make sure you leave a comment down below let me know what you think to the patch and um yeah um it's a good patch it's nice to see some additional new things would like to have seen some more fixes i'm starting to feel like the mention of the server improvements is a little bit of a um sort of carrot on a stick i don't think they're doing enough on that side of it i think they should be focused solely on improving the back end and optimization of the game fixing the problems we've had with the trade routes all that kind of stuff that's my personal opinion but there we go guys thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button for weekly videos live streams and all that good stuff and uh, i'll catch you next time cheers